Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. And Frank, people by now have seen your amazing Lich King armor that you built for Blizzard yes. uh, to show off at Comic-Con. Yeah, for the new Hearthstone expansion. And the armor is so impressive. It's, it's so much fun. And it's tons of pieces, um, amazing sculptural detail. This is the helmet for that. Mm -hmm. And along with the helmet and the armor, something I noticed is that you have a lot of uh, shiny pieces. This isn't metal. No, 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 this isn't plated, this is painted. Painted yes. chrome finish on uh, a casting. Yes, this is, uh, this is smooth on uh, onyx. So it's just regular casting resin. Uh, a lot of the other parts were made out of uh, polyurea, which is like spray and truck bed liner. Um, but yeah, we were able to make, make them all the same shiny chrome finish. And that chrome finish is what a lot of cosplayers and prop makers uh, use on their, their droids, their robots, their helmets. Some of the trophies we made and, have been plated, yeah. And today we want to talk about the chroming process, because you've yeah. been experimenting in the shop mm -hmm. with chroming. Yes. Uh, how was this done? So traditional chroming is, is a plating process. So if I took it to a place like Artcraft over in Burbank, they spray it with a really high content copper paint and then they electroplate it with nickel and then they can, they can chrome that on top with something like rhodium, which gives you a really nice high bright finish. But that adds a lot of weight because mm. it's actual metal that's being plated on there and it's, it's a little bit pricey. I can't do it here in the shop because it takes a lot of specialty chemicals and special equipment. Um, and then sometimes it washes out some of the detail. Uh, so. Um, I wanted to do this in this like kind of hydrochrome process. We, I've seen videos online and you know people spraying spray bottles, all of a sudden something's chrome. Um, and I did a little bit of research and there's a lot of people that do this. Gordon Tarpley actually sprayed this one. He sprayed this whole Lich King suit because he has that whole system over in his you know, in his workshop. When he makes his droid armor and costumes. And his 3 POs and yeah, everything else. All yeah. of that is, I guess, done with this hydrochrome process. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so it's a spray. So walk me through that process. So uh, it's actually really simple. You have to prep the model. Everything's all in the prep. Like the better you prep it, the nicer it's going to come out. Um, so you prep it to whatever point you want. This is a little bit more forgiving because we weather it up so much. Um, and then you have to prime it and then clear coat it and then spray it with a couple different chemicals and then spray it with the silver nitrate spray um, and then clear coat it one more time and that's it. Well, this is like a finished weathered piece, and yeah. I'm really interested to see what it looks like after that hydrochrome mm -hmm. process. So we're gonna do that today. Yeah. And we have behind us a casting of a helmet. It's the exact same helmet. Yeah. Uh, this is with that onyx cast. It looks like you've done some work to it. Yeah, we've, put, we've assembled the parts because this was molded and cast in separate pieces. Assembled them, body shopped them together. This is prepped to a certain point, but this still needs to get primered and clear coated before we put the silver on. Okay, Frank, so what did you just do? So we sprayed a catalyzed primer and a catalyzed clear coat over the whole thing. And what do those things do? Well, with this process, we find that it's better if you use a catalyzed system all the way through. Um, if you use like a rattle can primer or a rattle can clear coat, it, it affects the later processes, the chemicals that you have to put on there um, to make the chrome work. So you have to have everything catalyzed all the way through. And the reason we put the clear coat on first is to give it this nice glassy sheen. Now we've also experimented with what color the, the undercoat is, whether it's black or gray or tan or who cares, doesn't matter. Oftentimes you have to have a black glossy subsurface to put these uh, chrome sprays on top, things like all clad or there was this other like brush on chrome system I saw all over like Facebook for a week. And the darker that undercoat, the shinier. Well, it, it, you, know. it, you need to have that gloss black underneath for, the, for that metallic coating to work. The problem is, is that you can't clear coat on top of those. It dulls the finish, and even those finishes on their own are not super durable. So that's where I like this a lot more because it doesn't matter what color it is underneath, and then I can also clear coat on top of it, which makes it a very durable coat. And these um, catalyzed primers and clear coats are stuff you can buy at any auto shop. Yeah, if you go to an automotive, um, like a auto body shop supply place, uh, a lot of those places have a variety of different primers and clear coats, and you can buy them. Usually, they you can't get them in less than a gallon, but we're using a lot of catalyzed stuff these days, so we're buying stuff in gallons. You can also get those catalyzed rattle cans, which I've shown before. Um, those work just as good too, but 
we're just buying in more bulk, so this is what we're using. So at this point, we're ready for the full hydrochrome process. Yes. When you look at a prep piece, what are the things you're looking for? A, a, like a comprehensive clear coat, nicely finished, sanded. Uh, what are the things that can make that chroming look the best? Um, it, it's, again, all about the prep. Like the more glass smooth it is, the more like that chrome is really gonna pop. Um, now these next seven steps you have to do in kind of quick succession. So it, it's not like a do something and then walk away. Like you just have to power through these next couple of steps. First step of the seven part process is washing the whole thing off with a little bit of soapy water. It's just some water with like a drop or two of soap. You don't need a ton of soap in there. And that's just to make sure that you don't have any oils um, from touching it from your skin or any debris or dust. You have to let that last clear coat stage uh, cure up for at least nine hours. So, you know, things may happen. You may touch this or it may get dust on it. Uh, and then you rinse it off with uh, distilled or deionized water. Rinse it off really good. Um, and then you start in with the chemical process. Now, uh, P-Chrome labels these with just solution W and solution D. And all you gotta do is put them in a, in a spritz bottle. It's nothing fancy. Um, and you, you really, really soak it down first with solution W. Make sure you get everywhere. And then, you, and then as soon as that's done, go right in with solution D. Spritz it on everywhere. And then you rinse it off with that distilled or deionized water again. And you have to watch watch the way the water sheets off. You want it to sheet off in kind of a glass fashion. Like it, you don't want it to be beating up anywhere. If it's beating up, then you have to kind of start all over again. You want to soap it, make sure that there's nothing that's, that's making these solutions not stick well. Or maybe you didn't spray it long. I mean, these are all things that as you do it a couple of times, you get used to what to look for. As soon as you have rinsed all of those chemical solutions off, you jump right into the chrome sprayer. Um, and with most of these chrome processes like this, you need to use this, this double nozzled spray gun. It's a pretty specific kind of spray gun. And what it does is it mixes these two chemicals about four to six inches past the sprayer. So you don't want to get too close or too far because it just it's not properly mixed. And you start at the bottom and work your way up. And, and when it comes out, it's like this like kind of dull brownish color. And then all of a sudden it just turns into this bright silver. It's, it's really neat. And after you do it a couple of times, you'll kind of get the hang of doing too much or not enough. If, you, if it's not enough, you're gonna get kind of black spots and like bad coverage. If it's too much, it'll start to, the chrome will start to dull. And then you just work your way around, try and make sure you, you get everywhere, but you really kind of drench this, this chrome solution on there. And then as soon as that's done, rinse it off one more time with that distilled or deionized water, and then spray it off with an air hose. So there's one final step after the silvering process, and it's mm -hmm. to clear coat the whole thing. Okay. Um, so the when you put the clear coat on here, sometimes it'll turn a little bit of a yellow tinge. So you have to put some purple pigment into the clear coat um, to kind of offset that yellowing. Um, if you wanted this to be gold, you could put like a caramely color in there, which will turn the whole thing very gold color. Um, but you could tint this a whole bunch of different directions after that. But to kind of get this like shiny chrome-ish color, we're gonna put some purple in there. A oh, purple, like, like almost like a bluish purple, and I can, I can see it a little bit. Yeah. And this, this is amazing. This looks like a solid chrome piece of a metal. Yeah. Right, even though it's just cast resin. Yeah. And to compare this with the one you made for Blizzard, yeah. uh, this one of course has some weathering on it and yeah. some more details. So uh, we, yeah, we did a whole weathering pass on this with um, blacks and browns and micaceous iron oxide and a bunch of highlights of blue to kind of give it this like ethereal frozen armor look. How resilient is that chroming? Like how much do you have to do it to make it wear off? I mean, I can, I can still, this still looks metal. Uh, yeah, well this is, I mean, once it's clear coated with this automotive clear coat, it's, it's a really durable finish. So, mm. um, I mean, you'd have to goof it, like mess it up like any other paint. To, to like mess it up. Like you know, using automotive paints, like the clear coats and the primers and all this stuff, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, how to get the, uh, the reducers right and how to spray it so it doesn't drip and 
you know, all that kind of stuff. And that's, you know, if I was painting a Lamborghini, that's very much different than painting a distressed metal helmet. Uh, so this is a little bit more forgiving than if I was doing a car. And it is a process. Yeah. Like we showed, you have a lot of prep work you need to do. Mm -hmm. So much of it is in that prep work yeah. uh, before you even go through your seven steps of the silvering. Yeah. And, and this can be applied to all sorts of costuming parts and props. Co yeah, costuming parts and props for sure. Um, I want to coat like a, like Ray's blaster. Bill Duran gave me a, a casting of that. Like I want to do that. Maybe a lightsaber. I don't know. Maybe let's find some other stuff to, to chrome up. It's just another tool in Frank's shop. Hydrochroming. That's yeah. so cool. And of course, this helmet and the whole costume looked amazing. So much fun. Huge hit at Comic Con. Thanks so much, Frank, for showing us the hydrochroming process. If you have questions, post them in the comments below, and we'll check them out. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.